to you guys. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am really sorry for being late. It was an I had some internet issue essentially. So I had to come back to my office in order to get it. Okay, so today we wanted to do a CNN example and the reason for doing this example was in order to see that we are able to design a practical CNN. So I hope my screen is visible to everybody. Somebody needs to confirm if my screen is visible to all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. So today's task is how do you design a complete CNN? And this is an end to end example which we are going to take. So to start with, um, I, I will take this example for of what we call as Linet, Linet 5. OK, so it derives its name from the fact Li is something which comes down from. Yan Le Kun. So. This Li is from here and a net is for network and then there's this number five, which means it has five trainable layers. Now I'll come down one by one onto what we mean by a trainable layer and then what happens after that uh, subsequently. Okay. Now the first thing is uh, input over here is a grayscale image. of size 32 cross 32, which means my input tensor is X, which belongs to R power of 1 cross 32 cross 32. This is what it is supposed to be. So this is the only first constant which I know. Next is there are 10 classes of images. So another thing what I know is this omega. This is equal to omega 0, omega 1, like this up to omega 9. And each of them is sort of binary. So omega i belongs to either 0 or 1. OK, so these are the only two constants which I know. Now this kind of a uh, scheme of representing the classes is what we also call as a one hot encoding. It's, it's a binary hot encoding, but uh, the reason is that only one of those bits over there is anyways going to be 1 and all the others are 0. So if the digit is 0, then omega 0 will be 1. All the others are going to be 0. That's, that's why we call it as a one hot encoding. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. Now in this Linet over here, uh, so I will write it in a very different way 
than what you might have typically seen on the internet for any of these images. So I have this input over here. This is X and this is in. So this input from here actually passes on to a convolution layer. So I have a convolution layer. What I would do is I would start marking my learnable layers in, in a different color. Okay. Now this is a conf 2D. And I represent this as. So let me write down this operation. So this has five cross five sized convolution kernels. So 5s. This operates with a stride of one. So 5c, 1s. And this does not have any zero padding. Zero padding. Oh, uh, am I missing something? Oh, yes, I am missing something. I put it wrong. So there are six convolution channels. So 6C, then there is 5W, which is 5 cross 5 convolution kernel. Then there is stride of 1, and there is 0 padding over here. So if this X goes as input to this one, out comes sudden. Uh, so we'll, we'll come to that. Then this again goes to, goes to a non-learnable block, which is a max pool and this max pool operates as 2w 2s 0p if i if i just want to then from there whatever comes down this again goes to another convolution layer And this operates as 16C 5W. Uh, hmm. 16C 5W 1S 0P. And this again goes to another max pooling layer. which operates with 2w 2s 0p okay now i have this question so say that this tensor over here the convolution tensor is what we call as P. And for the first layer, we call it as P1. Okay. So what is the size of P1? Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, the input image should be R C cross th six cross 32 cross 32, right? No, it is single channel grayscale image, so it will be one cross 32 cross 32. But sir, in convolution, we apply six channel. Yes, so, so six channels means there are six convolution kernels. Each convolution kernel tensor has a certain size, and that is what I am asking you here. Six cross 28 cross 28, sir. What will be six cross 28? Tell me what is for P1. So output of P1 is 6 cross 28 cross 28. And no, I am asking you what is P1. I'm not asking you what is output of P1. Tell me what is P1. 
6 cross 5 cross 5. 1 cross 5 cross 5. <laughs> 6 cross 1 cross 5 cross 5. Yes, correct. Just a minute, I have a call. Yeah, so now tell me what will be the size of this output tensor Z1? Sir, 6 cross 1 cross 28 cross 28. 6 cross 1 cross. Think again. 6 cross 28 cross 28. See, what's happening over here is in this conv, when I'm looking at P1, okay. So this P1 is essentially a collection like this. P1 is a set of multiple such tensors. Okay, now each tensor over here is one cross five cross five. Now this one channel, now look over here. This number of channeling input and number of channel over here will be same. This is what it has to have. Otherwise this will not work. Are we correct? Now, what you see is you have six such convolution kernels. So there are six over here. Now for each of them, you will get a 28 cross 28 and there will be six of those coming out. That's the reason your output will again be a 3D tensor, which is the number of channels is equal to the number of convolution kernels and the spatial span is guided by that spatial span calculation, which we had. Okay, now I have this max pool operator over here. Now as a result of max pool, now look over here. I don't have any tensors inside that max pool because there is no learnable parameter. So let me give this legend. So this one is a learnable block. This one is a non learnable block over here. Okay. So now that I have this max pool, so this is going to give me an output which I call as Z2. So can somebody tell me what will be the dimension of this Z2? 6 cross 14 cross 14. Okay, good. Now I have this. Uh, uh, shouldn't the uh, max pool have 3W? I'm having a bit of trouble with while calculating this 6 cross 14 cross 14. Why will it be 3W? Now look over here. What am I doing? I'm, I'm basically moving it with a certain stride. Yes, sir. 2S. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it will essentially be divided by the number of strides over there. OK, sir, it is only about the number of strides. Yeah. OK, sir, yeah. OK, 
OK, so now for this second convolution, say I have this convolution kernels represented by P2. Now, can somebody tell me what will be this P2 looking like? 16 cross 5 cross 16 cross 1 cross 5 cross 5. So essentially, there are 16 such blocks each of size 6 cross 5 cross 5 and where it is matching is this number of channels is the same as this number of channels okay and the output over there so now let's look into this output so this i call as z3 so what will be my z3 what is my z3 going to be 6 cross 10 cross 10 16 cross 10 cross 10 16 cross 10 cross 10 not 6 16 see the number of what did i say i said that the number of channels in the output is the same as the number of such unique convolution kernels because each convolution kernel of 6 cross 5 cross 5 is going to give you only one channel over there and then we are concatenating along the channel dimension so the number of channels in my output is the same as number of convolution kernels which i have over here now again i have a max cooling operator and from here i get z4 so what will be the size of z4 16 cross 5 cross 5 16 cross 5 so 16 cross 5 cross 5. This is what you have over here. Okay. So now. So yeah, tell me. Sir, so, so like uh, when we are coming out of this max pool layer, the number of uh, like the number of uh, kernels that are out there, like uh, in the second instance, it was 16. That is what defines the number of channels in the output image. See the in a two dimensional max pool. So we are looking at max pool in the two dimension. OK, so when I'm doing that max pooling operation, I'm operating on a per channel basis. I'm not taking across all the channels in any way. Yeah. Now that I'm operating on a per channel basis, so the number of input channels is the same as number of output channels. Yes. So if I was operating that max pool in say 3D, then it would have been different. So in order to keep it simple, what I would do is I would, I would just write it on that dimension. So it's a max pool in 2D. Okay. So now here what I get, so this is not where it ends. So how many con how many learnable layers did I see till now? Sir, two layers. Sir, two. Only two. Only two layers. Okay, but my uh, Linet is supposed to have five layers. I, I said that it is Linet five. OK, so now comes the next interesting part. So since my Linet is supposed to have five layers, but I have just seen only two layers. Now, now let us see like what will happen over here. So I have my Z4 over here. So I'm just calling this out. Sir, please change the slide in the just a minute. So I have Z4. This Z4 belongs to R power of 16 cross 5 cross 5. Okay. So after this, I will not have any more convolution operations. Now onward, I will uh, have some linear operations. So what I would do is I would transform this into a set of linear neurons. So this is a flatten operation. A tensor flattening is typically what 
loses out all the other dimensions over there and makes it into one dimension so something like uh, a row major representation or a column major representation a one degree representation so if i do that then i can call this as z4 say dashed now what will be z4 dashed looking at so how many rows will i have and how many columns will i have over here 400 so I will have 400 cross one. OK, now from here I get into another learnable layer. Now this is a FC or a fully connected layer. And how I, I, I define this one is so how many input to how many output is what I define over here. Um, So, uh, so, so this is a FC of uh, uh, how many input to output. So, what I would do is from 400, I will now move it to 120. So, this is defined as FC. Mm, 400 comma 120. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The convention is 400 FC 120. Yeah. 400 FC 120. Okay. So this is what goes here. This is what comes out over here. Now, if I ask you to tell me for this FC, what will be my weight matrix? And let's call this as uh, weight matrix of three. So what will be my weight matrix? What will be my bias matrix over here? Can you tell me the size of this weight matrix? So for a fully connected layer, what is the size of this weight matrix? 120 cross 400. 120 cross 400 and for my uh, bias what will it be 120 cross 120. One. Mm, yeah okay so now if i get this one then what is my output so this one i call as z5 what is this going to look like? What is my Z5 equal to? 120 cross 1. 120 cross 1. Now from here, I put it into another FC layer. And this FC is 120 FC 84. So if that is the scenario, then this one, if I call it as w4 so what will be w4 and what will be b4 84 plus 120 and 120 uh, 84 plus 1 okay so now from here i get my output so this becomes z6 so what will be z6 equal to? 84 cross 1. 84 cross 1. Then I have another FC layer. And this FC layer is 84 FC 10. So essentially this weight belongs to so what will be this weight equal to ten cross eighty four ten cross eighty four and this will be ten cross one ten cross one and then I will get my output over here which is y and what is this y belonging to 
टेन क्रॉस वन टेन क्रॉस वन सो क्यूमुलेटिवली इन दिस होल नेटवर्क विच यू हैव सीन टिल नाउ सो हाउ मेनी ट्रेनेबल लेयर्स आर प्रेजेंट क्लासेस Okay, now this 120 and 84 was a heuristic choice, uh, not not just random guesses, but they had actually done some experiments and found out that with this number, you are optimally able to encapsulate the information needed for this problem. Later okay. on in the class, I will be getting into what we call as neural architecture search, where I will be showing you that how. you can put certain constant so these constants can be that i want to have the same number of compute but i can change the number of weights i i can change the depth of a network width of a network and then accordingly play with my number of weights which are present and then um, i can actually increase my capacity so what i am going to do over there is that i will retain my number of operations which i am doing or maybe like i, I scale up my number of operations by a certain factor and accordingly what can be the different ways in which i can have my different networks design so i will come down to that as well and sir one more thing this number of uh, fully connected layers they are three out here right sir so this yes. is also some sort of a heuristic choice or like uh, yes as of now it's a heuristic choice so okay. these guys did not really work on uh, what they had done is they had manually seeded something so remember something we are looking at a network which is from um, almost 1983 so yeah. that, that's uh, close to 50 years ago okay so since we are looking at a uh, not 50 years 40 years ago yeah so if you are looking at a network from really that old then 40 years ago people were not really doing so much of it and it was still in its early stage okay okay so today people today we have we have we actually write down Codes which design networks and find out the optimal network for a given problem. That's where is the current state of deep learning. Okay, sir. So now, but before you go to that current state, you will have to understand things from a very fundamental point over here. So the next part which I want you to do is that can you tell me for each of these layers what will be the total number of trainable parameters? So. essentially what i want to do is let me go over here so if i write down layer number um uh, weight size bias size number of parameters so i have layer 1 which is con 2d so what is my weight size over here so if i 1 cross 5 cross 5 so this is 6 cross 1 cross 5 cross 5 what is my bias over here what will be the size of the bias 6 cross 1 6 cross 1 so if i look into my total number of parameters my total number of parameters is all of these parameters plus all of these parameters so how many do i have 25 into 6 so 25 into 6 is 150 plus 6 which makes it 156 can i change the size Sorry. Hmm. So I have over here, which is uh, six into one uh, into five into five. This is hundred and fifty, and then I have six into one, which is six. 
So in total, I get 156 parameters over here. Now I have layer two, which is again a conf 2D. So what was the weight size in my second layer? 16 cross 6 cross 5 cross 5. Okay. Now what was the size of bias in my second layer? 16 cross 1. 16 cross 1. Now can you tell me what will be the total number of parameters over here? 2416. 2416. Okay. Now I have layer 3 which was a fully connected layer. So in layer 3 what was the size of my weight matrix? 120 cross 400. And for my bias it was 120 cross 1. So what will be my number of parameters over here? Four eight one two zero. Then I have layer four. So this layer four has um, eighty four cross one twenty, and this is eighty four cross one. So now, what will be the total number of parameters? One zero one six four. One zero one six four. Okay, and then I have layer five, which is also fully connected, and this has ten cross eighty four, and this is ten cross one. So, what is my total number of parameters here? Eight fifty. Eight. 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 Eight five zero. Okay. Now, can you sum this one and and tell me what is the total number of parameters, learnable parameters in this model? Sixty-one thousand seven hundred and six. Sixty-one thousand seven hundred and six. Okay. So if somebody asks you that what is your uh, order of the model or number of learnable parameters of the model, then for any given model, what you need to do is initially find out that which are the learnable layers. What is the size of this learnable tensor? Both the weight and the bias. If, if uh, until analysis, it is explicitly specified that these are zero bias networks. You will have both of the weight and bias taken into consideration and then find out what is the total number of parameters, independent parameters over there and then sum them up. So this is essentially going to tell you what is the number of learnable parameters in your model. So number of learnable parameters. This is equal to 61,706. Okay. Now comes another question, which is called as model size. So in order to find out model size, uh, there are different ways of doing it. Okay. Now let me make it in the most generic way possible. So I will again have the same table cloned out over here that what is my layer? What is my weight? Then number of. Params in weight. Then. Weight model size. Then bias num params bias and then bias model size and they tell you the reason why they are right so say in layer one it is a conf 2d your weight is 60 uh, 6 cross 1 cross 5 cross 5 
so your total number of parameters is 150 now if i am storing these in double precision or, or say single precision floating point number so a single precision floating point number so here this is uh, uh, single precision floating point number is fp32 32 bit floating point number representation system okay now if it is storing it in fp32 then what is my model size in in bytes say so it, it's essentially taking four bytes in order to store it so how many bytes will be my model size now Six hundred. 600 bytes now my bias over here is 6 cross 1 now that means that i have six such elements which are being stored now i can have this one also stored it in fp32 and then this becomes six bytes so in total it's going to take 606 bytes in order to store it okay i'll leave some space because i will come back and revisit it I have another conf 2D, which is 16 cross 6 cross 5 cross 5. So how many parameters were there in the 16 cross 5 cross 5 cross 5? Sir, in the bias model size, that should be 24, right? Because it's 4 bytes. Sir. Oh, 4 bytes, yes, sorry. That will be 24. Correct. Yeah. Now tell me how many number of parameters in my conf 2D? Like weights is 2400. 2400. And say this is also FP32. Then what will be my model size in bytes? 9600. Okay. My bias is 16 cross 1. So this is 16 at F. 32 so this is going to be uh, how much 64 64 good now the third layer is an fp uh, sorry uh, fc layer what fp this is an fc and this fc is uh, 120 cross 400 so how much was it Four eight zero zero zero. So please complete it. So how many bytes will be over here? 192000. And over here. Four eighty. This one. One zero zero eight zero. So you can actually fill it up. I'm, I'm not focusing on this part of it. Now, in current day, most of your compiler systems, by virtue of like GPUs or multi uh, precision CPUs, what they allow is that you can actually operate them on reduced precision system as well, which means we have something which is called as a half precision floating point system which is fp16 now if i do that it means that i'm going to take only two bytes so this model size from 600 this actually reduces to 300 now bias in some cases is 
represented again in FP32 because the operation over there continues in that. <coughs> so I will actually get down to this mixed precision way of representing and, and working it out. And there you would see that by actually changing these precisions in a different way, you can compromise and, and change a bit on what is your total memory size requirement over there. There are also these options where you have it working in int 8 format which means it is just in one byte what it's going to take. Although this one, so this in int 8 also stays as int 8 as a result of which it, it reduces. Okay. Now similarly, uh, let me go till here. So say here also it was done in the same way. FP16, this would become 4800. This one bias is generally something which you will retain as 32 bits instead of uh, just just in order to have it of a higher resolution. <coughs> so this will be 2400 at intake. And in this case, this is going to become 2400. Here it's going to be 16 at int 8, which will make it 16. So like this you can do, but in general we see that in case of FCs or the fully connected layers, these changes are not done. In case like the whole network is made in a reduced precision, <coughs> it's a different matter. But if you're doing a mixed precision kind of a thing, then it changes. Now, this is uh, sort of like how you can actually find out what will be the model size in bytes, which means when you write a model and save it, then how many bytes is it going to take? But that is not all. A model will also require a certain amount of memory in order to operate, which is what we call as operational memory. OK, so tomorrow we will actually start with doing the operational memory requirement in forward pass operation, which is only during inference. We are not going to look into the backprop because we haven't yet started the backpropagation part of it. So once we get back, once we do the backdrop, then we will again get back to it. The tomorrow we are going to do the complete memory complexity for inference with a neural network. OK. So I end the class for the day and uh, we again then meet tomorrow at 11.